Hello everybody, today I want to talk about my ESP32 remote. Or rather, how my ESP32 remote works in combination with other ESP32s. So in this video I won't be talking about building the ESP32 remote, but I'll give you a quick overview of what's in it and maybe in a future video I'll be talking about building a version 2 of my ESP remote using a T-Deck with an old school Blackberry keyboard. I miss using these guys a lot so I'm excited for that future video even if it's a bit more bulky and bigger but I'll have a speaker in there and some other features. Probably I will also have to connect a second ESP but that's something for a future video. For now let's talk about my ESP32 remote. How it connects to other ESP32 and some of the simple code behind. I'll also leave links to my github repositories below so if you want you can check those out. Now my ESP remote is a rather simple concept. It will connect with an ESP32. I can program this without having to program this. And this ESP will send the display information over to my remote. And my remote will send the control information over to my ESP32. I did this in order to avoid a problem I have with earlier ESP devices, which is adding a screen adding controls which generally just bulks up the space quite a lot. This is my ESP32 seat counter. I can control it over here with these buttons and knobs and they are the issue. I will just quickly show you guys the seat counter. So the seat counter has an electromagnet in it that goes on and off in a sine wave and it pulls the whole platform down and up. There are little springs as you guys can see and four of them. They pull the platform in a little rotating motion. So every time it does a little jump forward in the opposite direction of the this. So the seeds jump this direction. There are no other moving parts than the electromagnet that goes up and down. As you guys can see, the functionality of the seat counter is quite simple. I just need some way to move my menu up and down, confirm and display how many seats I have. Now I don't need to every time I build a device, build this entire front casing. So my idea was to take this entire front casing and just for the most part remove it. I only want the ESP32 in here and the electronics and the power. I don't need the screen, buttons and controls on every device. I would much rather wirelessly control this device and do the same thing. So how did I accomplish this? If you look at my recent video, you can see I wirelessly control my device using the ESP remote. And in this video, I'm going to be going over how it works on the programming end and some of the electronic components. So let me show you. My idea is whenever I get a new ESP32, I want it to be as easy as possible to connect to the remote. And also I want the programming of the ESP32 not to be much more complicated or even easier than it would be otherwise. So I'll be showing you how I connect this ESP32 to this remote from a fresh start. So first let's talk a little bit about the remote. The remote itself has NFC abilities with an NFC reader in the back. It has easily accessible RX and TX and ground and three volt ports. 
in order to read data of another ESP, which I'll be getting to in a second. And as well as this, it has a buzzer down here and it also has a vibrating motor to give confirmations when the ESP32 is successfully connected, for example. And then it has controls, which is a button here, a button here, left, right, up, down, select, and then a button here and a button here. Pretty easy. I can display my battery power. So I have some IR options. I can copy remote controls. I have multiple slots in which I can save my remotes. So for example, slot zero, I can now set a button. So this button should do this. And now if I go into the remote control that I just created and I press this button, it should turn on or off my TV instantaneously. There you go. So basically I can use this as a basic remote, but that is not the main function of this remote. The main function of this remote is that I can control other ESP32s with it. So I will be showing you how I set up a brand new ESP32 using this remote and quickly create a small program that just opens and closes a solenoid wirelessly using this remote. So let's go, let's get into it. I have an empty chip. I have a new ESP32 and I have my remote. What do I do? How can I connect them together? So the first thing I do is I have to load my sender code on here, which is just very basic code. Let's switch over to the code. And I don't wanna be going too deep into how this code works since it's quite long and complex, but I will be giving you a quick overview of how data transmission work with the display data and sending the button data. But first, let me quickly show you my setup. I use platform IO with VS Code instead of the Adreno IDE because I think the folder structure is much more manageable and easier to use. And here you guys can just change to whichever board you're using. For example, if the sender code is using ESP32 S3, you just find the right board, type in ESP32. And if that board exists in the platform IO board library, that should run just fine. Anyways, I want to show you guys how my code works. So I'll be giving a quick overview. I won't be going into very much detail on how this works, just a very quick overview of how the functionality is. So on the sender side and send blocking data, the sender creates a message that includes a unique ID, like a tracking number, along with a command and data it wants to send. This message is put into a queue and a dedicated task picks it up and sends it using ESP now, like mailing a registered letter. Right after sending, the sender awaits a confirmation, an acknowledgement, using a seomorph. Think of this like expecting a return receipt in the mail. Basically, the sender now waits until it gets an acknowledgement from the remote that it has received its command. On the receiving side, and handle on data receive. When a message arrives, a callback function checks what type of message it is. Is it a command? The receiver will process it, like for example, move something onto the screen, and after processing, it will immediately send back an acknowledgement message with the same ID. Now back on the sender side, when the acknowledgement arrives, its callback locates a corresponding seomorph using the message ID and signals it, confirming that the message was received. If the sender doesn't get an acknowledgement in a certain amount of time, it assumes that the message is lost and tries to resend it until it finally gets a confirmation back. Therefore, if the sender is trying to send a display signal and the remote goes out of range, as soon as it comes back into range, it will receive that message and resume from where it left off. Now, I don't want to get much deeper into this code, but if you guys are interested, my GitHub link is down below. But before that, let me show you quickly how I would start a brand new ESP. So to start a new ESP, I would quickly set up the platform IO.ini file to match with the correct board that I'm currently using, whether it's an ESP32 Vroom, or ESP32 S3, or anything. Next, the entire program from the sender side starts at main, but I wouldn't program right into main because main just sets up the loop, gets the state factory going and sets up its first state, which in this instance is main menu state, but you could change this to anything. You could change this to any new state you create and a state is simply a blank canvas for you to use 
with an on enter, on exit, and update function. This ensures that there are not multiple states running at the same time with random things occurring in the background, but you can always focus on one state, one stage at a time. So if you're switching between menus, you can make each new menu function a new state, and by doing this, it keeps the code much cleaner. Anyways, so I have the menu state, and I created a pre-existing little menu function. You can create different menu items. I put menu option one, two, and I'm gonna put three, four, five into it. And I would now have to update in the header file that I have five menu options. By doing this, I would now have a screen that appears that prints first the line menu and then the lines option one, two, three, four, five. And through these lines, I can now scroll between five different menu options, which could execute down here five different selections if I press a certain button, which is all programmed in here. Again, you guys can look at this for yourself if you're more interested. But for now, I'm just going to upload this simple menu with five options onto my sender device. And then I'll show you guys how that sends over the display information to the remote and the remote can now control this sender device, which is my brand new ESP32, easily. Let me switch back to the real world. You have two options of setting up a new device. You can either read the MAC address or manually type in the MAC address if you already know it. So what I'm going to be doing is reading the MAC address since I think this is the funner way that I came up with that's much quicker and easier and more reliable in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do is turn off my remote. Oop, this puts it into deep sleep. And now I will connect the RXTX ports to this ESP32. This ESP can easily get the MAC address of this ESP by just connecting the RX to the TX pins. So I take the ground, and plug it into my remote's ground, and then I take the remote's power and plug it into the ESP's power. This way, I power the ESP with a common ground. Now I take the RX and plug it into the TX. And I take the TX and plug it into the RX. So for me, the easiest way to get the information off this ESP after the code is uploaded is just to go into my remote setup. This will get the MAC address automatically, after which I can unplug this ESP32 take this MAC address and save it onto my NFC chip. So now I'll save it. It will vibrate twice once it's done. It just finished vibrating. Now it will vibrate twice more once it's done cloning. So now all I need to do to connect to this ESP32 is scan the NFC tag and it will automatically establish a connection. As you guys can see, the code that we just had on the computer with the five menu options is displaying here. If I scroll down, it will scroll down normally. It's quite responsive. And all of this is computed, not on this device, but it's computed on this device. So the programming on this remote doesn't need to change. The programming on each ESP32 is individual, pretty much completely standard as a brand new ESP32. All it does is sends the display signals and gets the button signals from the remote. To give you a quick example, I'll quickly connect this solenoid with this TB6612 and the ESP and make a menu option that turns it on and off. So the motors A and B goes in here. I'll unplug this. 3 volt is this, so this is ground. Ground both powers, I'll just plug in the ESP's power. And now I need to connect the ESP to the motor driver. So since the motor is an A, I will plug in A1, A2, PWA and the standby needs to go and be set to high. So I need four empty pins. Yes, those four I'm gonna use. So first pin will be the standby, next pin will be PWMA, next pin will be standby, PWMA, PWA. Then comes A1 and then A2. There we go. Now this will connect the solenoid to the ESP32. Now I'll quickly throw some basic code together to show you guys how I control the solenoid with my wireless remote. Okay, so now to create a menu option that will turn the motor on and off, I would simply create two menu options with on 
and off. Update the header to two options. And define the pins that I have connected to my motor at the top. Just like you would do in any other Arduino IDE programming scenario. So I would have to follow the pins as I defined them before. 23, 22, 1 and 3. Then an on enter I would set up the pins. I would set each pin as an output pin. And now in the option number 0. Since if I over a menu option and I press the select button I will execute the select for that specific menu option. So option 0 is turn on. That would mean I would turn on the motor here. I would set pin A1 to high and pin A2 to low. Then I would set PWM to high and set the standby to high as well so that the motor driver turns on. And an execute selection for menu option number 1. I want to turn it off. So what will I do? I will turn the A all to low and the standby STBY to low. And that's it. That's how easy it is to program a brand new ESP32 with two menu options, make a motor driver turn on and off, and you can control all of this wirelessly without having to add an extra display to your brand new ESP32 that's connected to the motor driver. Let's switch back to the real world. Fun part is I don't have to upload to the remote. I only have to upload to the ESP32. So now with my remote, I can rescan the chip to reset the menu. There we go. We have our new menu options on the remote. On and off. On and off. On. Sadly, there's not enough power to pull it in, but I turn it on. See, it's off. Doesn't work. I turn it on. It releases. So let's get some other motor that actually works to demonstrate it a bit better. Here's a small project I'm working on for automatic packaging. It doesn't matter right now, but this thing should turn on and off when I plug it in. So let's let's disconnect this solenoid and connect the motor under the turntable. A and B. Plug it into the USB-C port. And now I should get my remote signal back. There we go. Now if I turn it on, this plate should start spinning. Three, two, one. And now if I turn it off, the plate will stop spinning. Very simple to program, very easy to use. It just connects to the device. The device tells the screen what to display and you can just control your devices wirelessly. And this also works from quite a distance away. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to take my DJI, move away and turn it on, turn it off. I can move even further and from here I can still you go back there is my stuff. Turn it on and turn it off. I can move even further away can still turn it on and turn it off. Now all the way over here, this is also sort of where my AirPods usually lose connection. It still works, but as soon as I start going around this wall, it stops working. Ah, it got, it got a signal there for a second, so you guys can see it works from quite the distance. Technically the spec for ESP now is 100 meters, so if you're outdoors with side of line it's a hundred meters of range yeah guys yeah that's it a quick overview how it works and code and a little bit about the parts if you guys are interested in any more information on the remote or enjoy watching videos like this please like and subscribe comment and let me know what fun projects you guys think i should do next thank you very much everyone have a nice day I'm happy on my own Making coffee just for one And eating breakfast all alone and Fewer dishes to be done I'm never running behind You're never on my mind No longer there to make me comb 